So January 24th, 2016 was one of the scariest nights of my life. I was returning home from a trip, but due to some severe weather in Utah, our plane was rerouted, then there was a layover of a couple of hours, and I finally arrived in Salt Lake City at midnight. Now a blanket, okay, no, actually more like a down comforter of snow, covered the roads. And what should have been like a 20 minute drive home took over two hours. As I drove, my grip, oh my gosh, my grip on that steering wheel turned my knuckles white. My breathing was irregular, my heart was racing. I experienced a level of anxiety that I didn't even know existed. I normally love the snow unless I have to drive in it. Well, you know what? According to Proverbs chapter 31, verse 21, my experience that night took me totally out of the running for being a virtuous woman. Yep, that's right. Verse 21 states that a virtuous woman is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. And apparently I wasn't dressed right. The proverb of a virtuous woman found in Proverbs chapter 31 has traditionally taught us the qualities of an ideal wife. However, after a careful reading of this proverb in both English and Hebrew, I oppose the traditional definition of what it means to be virtuous, and I want to reframe this idea for all women. I'm Tammy Uzalak Hall, and this is my 5-Minute Fireside. Over the course of the last seven years, I have carefully studied the proverb of a virtuous woman, and I am so excited to share with you the three truths that I have learned. First, we have unfortunately limited the context of the word virtuous to strictly matters of chastity or modesty. But in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, the word virtue actually means strength and power. Now, add the suffix O-U-S, which means possessing or full of a given quality, and we can see that a virtuous woman possesses or is filled with strength or power. So what is this power and where does this power come from? It's priesthood power and it comes from covenants. Elder D. Todd Christofferson taught us that the source of moral and spiritual power is God. He then said, our access to that power is through our covenants with him. The moment we enter into any covenant with Jesus Christ, we are filled with his power. We become and are virtuous. Elder Christofferson pointed this out when he said, our foundational covenant, the one in which we first pledge our willingness to take upon us the name of Christ, is confirmed by the ordinance of baptism. By this ordinance, we become part of the covenant people of the Lord. I mean, how cool is that, that every little eight-year-old girl on the day of her baptism enters into her first covenant with Christ and is virtuous, filled with power, priesthood power. Sister Joy D. Jones shared with us that she didn't even know this was true when she was young. She said, my personal admission today is that as a woman, I didn't realize earlier in my life that I had access through my covenants to the power of the priesthood. I mean, how amazing is that? Virtuous women are filled with power through the covenants they make with the husband, which has nothing to do with an actual wedding or registering for gifts. Which leads me to the second lesson I have learned from this proverb, and that is that it is entirely about our relationship with Jesus Christ. Thank goodness that the Hebrew text allows us to explore the possibility that the husband in this proverb is Jesus Christ. And the entire proverb is symbolic of a woman's covenant relationship with him, which every woman can have regardless of her marital status. Throughout scripture, Christ is called the bridegroom and the husband. And the moment we enter into any covenant with him, we symbolically become married to the Savior. The third lesson I learned from my studies of this proverb is that when reading and studying the proverb, please, we do not need to go down the dark and lonely rabbit hole of perfectionism and how far from it we feel. It is so easy to see why upon first reading of the proverb and taking it at face value. The extremely saintly sister it describes is nothing short of astonishing. She's an ideal wife, a mother, a valued contributor to society, sews her own clothing, dresses really well, stays up late to take care of her family, mm -hmm, cooks exceptional meals, is strong, works a side gig to earn extra money, and is a tireless proponent of all that is good and right. This description of a virtuous woman can leave many of us, if not all, with feelings of discouragement and inadequacy, wondering who could possibly be so perfect. But you know what? There is no mention of that word in this proverb. And thank goodness, because you know what? In Hebrew, that word means complete or finished. I don't know about you guys, but I've still got some life to live, and I plan to live it as virtuously or as powerfully as possible. 
This proverb is 22 verses of everything a virtuous woman is already doing symbolically. 22 verses that are steeped in beautiful symbolism, showing what it looks like to actively move in the path of power. For example now, snow. So what in the world does snow have to do with this proverb and being virtuous? Well, snow and scripture can have dual symbolism, representing physical and spiritual death. A virtuous covenant-keeping woman is not afraid of death for herself or her household, because according to this verse, she and her household are covered in scarlet. Now, often in scripture, the color scarlet is a symbol of the Savior's atonement. I am so grateful that this has nothing to do with dressing fancy. Now verse 21 makes perfect sense. A virtuous woman is not afraid of physical or spiritual death for her household because she and her household are covered by the Savior's atonement. Absolutely. This knowledge and application are what enable us to live with our heavenly parents again someday. Here's the common thread that runs through each of these three truths that I found in my studies of this proverb, and it's just how much our heavenly parents love us. Our heavenly parents' plan of happiness is happy. According to the proverb, a virtuous woman knows the source of happiness and is promised happiness, glory, and praise for the path of virtue that she's walked. Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31, are a demonstration of the covenant-keeping life a virtuous woman is doing her best to live. She knows that she is a daughter of heavenly parents who love her so much that the promises at the end of the proverb will make you shout for joy that you are virtuous, that you are filled with the strength and power that comes from making and keeping covenants with Christ. I'm Tammy Uzalak-Hall, and this has been my 5-Minute Fireside.